So this exercise is related to topic alkanes and alkenes. Uh, the last week we did was the MCQs related to alkanes and alkenes. That was exercise one. And today we'll do some structure questions related to alkanes and alkenes. So in question one, petroleum is a source of many important chemicals. Name two industrial processes which must take place to produce an alkene from petroleum. So first, what we have to do, uh, like we have a crude oil or a petroleum, and we have to separate the fractions of the petroleum. So what's the first technique which we use? We use a fractional distillation, the first process. So fractional distillation, separate the fractions in the petroleum. And then the second one, the long chain compound, we break down into a small and the useful one. And we call that as a cracking. So fractional distillation and the cracking, cracking are the two processes by which we can obtain alkene from the petroleum or a crude oil, you can also say. In part B, ethene, which is CH2 double bond with CH2 and propene, which is CH2 double bond CH, then CH3, can be converted into a polymer. What type of polymerization take place when ethene forms a polymer? So whenever we form a polymer from alkenes by breaking the double bond, what we call this type of polymerization, we call that as addition polymerization. Empirical formula of the polymer, empirical formula of the monomer and polymer is always same. What is the meaning of empirical formula? The empirical formula shows the simplest ratio. So what is the simplest ratio? If you have like ethene is there, so it has two carbon atoms and it has four hydrogen. So what is the simplest ratio? One is to two. That's empirical formula. Same thing for a propene. It has three carbon atoms and it has six hydrogen atom, what will the ratio? The ratio will be CH2. So all these polymers, which are formed from addition, by addition reaction, or polymers of alkene, they are always have an empirical formula of CH2. Then propene has a structure of CH2, CH, and then CH3. Draw the two repeat unit. If you want to draw a polymer, first thing what we do, like this is a monomer, first we rearrange the structure. So first we rearrange. It should appear like letter H and then we draw a polymer. Okay. But because in the question we have to just draw the polymer directly. So you can do this part of rearranging on the blank page uh, of your exam paper. Like they give the space so you can utilize that space. But I will do it here. So first We'll have C double bonded with, I'll arrange here, like first rearrange. So our monomer should appear like letter H. So C double bonded with C, two bonds up, two bonds down. This carbon is having a double bond. So two hydrogens are there. So one hydrogen up, one hydrogen down. This carbon is having one hydrogen, so up and down. And then next to that is CH3. So this will be CH3. That is still a monomer. But how to draw a polymer to repeat unit? So we, we will draw the same structure as a monomer without a double bond. So it will be C, H here, H here, H and CH3. That is a one unit. Then we draw the second unit. And we link them together. So this will be a, two, these are the two repeat units of the monomer. And the name of the polymer is polypropene. Is it uh, clear? Any doubt in this? The polymer? Then ethene react with steam from ethanol, propene react with steam, it will form alcohol. So if propene is reacting with steam, what will be the product? The product will be propanol. 
we have to draw the isomer. Isomers means uh, they should have the same molecular formula, but different structures. So we have to draw two different structures of propanol. So prop means three carbons. So first we draw three carbon atoms. And alcohol, because alcohol means OH. So we'll, we can attach OH with the first one. Then this will have two hydrogens. This will have two hydrogen. This will have three hydrogen. This is one structure, one isomer. Then to draw the second one, again, prop means three carbon. So we draw three carbon. And now the OH is attached with the second carbon. So one is propane one all and the other one is propane two all. So these are the two isomers of propanol. They have the same molecular formula, but different structure. That's why we call them as isomers. Petroleum is a source of many important chemicals. Uh, this is the same thing. Now question two, alkene and alkenes, a petroleum is a mixture of a hydrocarbon and it is separated into useful fractions. And this can be done using a fractionating column as you can see. So what happened to petroleum at point X? What we do at point X? So actually at point X, we heat, heated you can also say or boiled, you can also use the term boiled or heated. The second one state two ways the fraction O and L are different. How fraction O and L are different as, as we go down, what will happen? The boiling point increases. The number of the carbon also increases. And uh, it become more viscous, the viscosity increases. It will become more viscous or thick and the color also dark. So when we compare fraction L with O, when we compare the fraction L with O, so you can mention O will be darker than L or O will have a high boiling point than L or will be O will be more viscous than fraction L. So do, you can mention two ways, they are different. Most of the hydrocarbon obtained from petroleum are alkanes and belongs to a homologous series and they are saturated. Two characteristic other than the same general formula. So what are the characteristic of uh, other than the general formula? So they have the same functional group and they have the similar chemical properties. And they have uh, similar chemical properties. And there's also another that each member of the homologous series, you have to learn these uh, differ by CH2. So the difference between the member is always CH2. These are the characteristics you have to learn for the homologous series. Then alkane with a molecular formula of C5H12 can exist in number of structured isomers. So two isomers we have to draw for alkane, five carbon atoms. So first five carbon atoms, we can draw them in a line, a straight, that's a straight chain. This will have uh, three hydrogens. This will have two hydrogens. This will have two hydrogens. This will have two hydrogens. And this will have three hydrogens. That is one. The second one, we can draw four of them in a straight chain and make a branch. But remember, the branch can only be placed from second carbon till the second last carbon. You cannot place a branch at the first or the last carbon. So you cannot place a branch here or here. It can be placed from second to second last carbon, so we can place a branch here. Now just put the hydrogen, because carbon maximum can form four bonds. So one is already here, so it's le we are left with three bonds here. Three bonds here. 
one bond here, two bonds here, and then three bonds here. So this is this is actually C five H twelve, which is the structure like two isomers of C five H twelve, diff two different structures of C five H twelve. Alkanes, alkane ethane has a structure. When a mixture of ethane and a chlorine are exposed to UV radiation, draw the structure of one organic product. So actually what happened, there's a substitution reaction when ethene or any alkene reacted with chlorine. So one of the chlorine take position of the hydrogen and a hydrogen take position of chlorine. So what will be the product if one of the hydrogen is replaced by chlorine? Any one of the hydrogen can be replaced. It's not like only the right hand side or left. It can be any carbon. Any hydrogen can be replaced by chlorine. So this will have one chlorine. And what will the other product? The other product will be HCl because hydrogen combined with chlorine. Isoferene is a naturally occurring a hydrocarbon. How the name suggests that it has a double bond. So because ene is there, the name contains ene. So presence or name is ending at ene. As the name is ending at ene, it means it contains a double bond. Now how to work out the empirical formula of a compound? To work out the empirical formula of the compound, if you have the percentage or the mass, First, what we do, we divide it by atomic mass. That means we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and the total sum of the percentage should be 100% um, or 99.99. .99. So this is 88.24. If it is not 100%, means there's another element. So first, what we do, we divide by atomic mass. So we divide this by 12. We divide this by 1. So 88.24 divided by 12. The answer will be, and whenever you write the answer, you should write to three decimal places. So 7.353. And this will remain 11.76 because the same, uh, we are dividing by one. So what is the step two? We divide by the smallest value in the combination. So 7.353 and 7.353. So when we divide, this will be 1, and this will be 1.6. So now we have carbon is 1, and hydrogen is 1.6. So but we, we cannot write 1.6. So what we have to do, we have to multiply with a number so that it convert into a whole number. Like, a specific, we will, if I multiply this by 2, it will be 3.2. If I multiply this by three, it will be 4.8, it's not a whole. If I multiply this by four, and if eventually if we multiply by five, so one, one multiplied by five, so this will be five, and 1.6 multiplied by five, so it will be eight. So the empirical formula is C3H8. So the, the what are the three steps when we are finding the empirical formula? The first one, we divide by relative atomic mass, the second one we'll divide by the smallest value in the combination. And the third one we complete or make the, the simplest ratio in a whole number. Sometimes it can be done by, by rounding off, but uh, you cannot like round off 1.6 to 2 or 1.6 to 1 as well. So that's why in that case, when there's a large difference to the next whole number, we multiply with a common factor, which can directly convert that into a whole number. Is it uh, clear, this one? Part E, E part two. Any doubt in this? Any question or a doubt? Okay. What is additional information we required? If you want to calculate a molecular formula, so what we need, we need a molecular. mass. So molecular mass is required if you want a molecular formula. 
The next question, question three. What is meant by a hydrocarbon? It's a two mark definition. It's compound which contain carbon and hydrogen. And one mark is for writing only. Compound which contain carbon and hydrogen only we call hydrocarbon. What are the three characteristic of a homologous series? They have the same functional group. They have uh, a general formula. And they have a similar chemical properties. These are the characteristic of the homologous series. Each member differ by CH2, learn all, all of them. Then name and draw the structure of a second member of alkene. The first member of alkene is ethene because the first alkene is ethene. So what is the second member? The second member will be propene. There is no methane. There is a methane, but not methane. And if we want to draw the structure of a propene, prop means three carbon. So we draw three carbon atoms. In me, there will be a double bond. It's not like they all have a double bond. Any one play, like the first position, we had a double bond. And then we put the hydrogens. This carbon will have two hydrogen. This will have one hydrogen. And this will have three hydrogens. Alcohols can be made from alkene. Name the reagent and the condition we need to convert alkene into alcohol. Alcohols can be made from alkene. So, uh, what are the reagent we need here we need like the chemical which we need so that is a steam because steam react with alkene any alkene to produce an alcohol and we also need a catalyst and a high temperature phosphoric acid as a catalyst so we need a chemical we need steam and a catalyst phosphoric acid as a catalyst And we need a high temperature. So these are the factors, the conditions we need to convert alkene into alcohol. Any doubt in this till this point? So these are the questions, the question one, two, three from exercise two.